Yeah, Jason just goes all out in this one. This, I feel, is the one where Jason truly comes into his own. Why, hello there YouTube and welcome back to 31 The Free Slashers. So, it is day 5 and for that one I am reviewing Friday the 13th Part 3. And of course this came out in 1982 in 3D. Uh, but it was 3D when it came out, at least really certain parts of it of course because it was the 80s. Uh, and this was uh, directed by Steve Miner and starred Dina Kim Kimmel, Kimmel uh, Paul Kratter, Kratter, what's the bit? and Richard Brooker as Jason Voorhees. So, this is the third installment of the Friday the 13th franchise. Uh, this time, um, you know, Jason is back. He's on the kill. He's on. He's on another part of the lake, but he's out killing again. And of course, this is the film where Jason dons the iconic hockey mask and makes the machete his weapon of choice. Well, he uses the machete in this more than he did in the second film. So, um, let's get on to our likes and dislikes. So, first of all, the likes. I liked Richard Brooker's portrayal of Jason in this we don't see much of him at first we don't get a good look at him but then he puts on you know the hockey mask and we see him all together well we don't see his face just yet but uh, yeah this is like I said the first film where Jason has the hockey mask and um, yeah I um, I liked this film uh, I like the musical score they had for this one, especially the theme tune to it. The, you know, the theme tune where it's playing that like retro sort of horror 80s music um, as the credits of the, the opening credits of the film rolled. I like that. I also like that it was all like sort of in 3D and it was meant to like come out in your face. Now, I haven't got the 3D DVD of it, I've just got the standard DVD. But that would have been interesting to see in 3D. Uh, of course, there were other bits in the film that were 3D. Some bits that were cool, some bits that weren't. 
such as a bit where there's like a yo-yo in coming out in your face I think that was 3D another part where there's a pole sticking out at you meant to be in your face and then there's a, a kill in there where Jason kills a guy and crushes his skull and his eye pops out that just looks so tacky and you can tell it's fake but still I, I guess that's an alright kind of kill unrealistic though um, Another kill we get in this is where the guy's walking on his hands and he's doing a handstand and Jason cuts him in half. Um, and yeah, he kills him. Um, and then he kills another person through the bed, I think. Is that part three or part four? Anyway, yeah, Jason does a lot of good kills in this, including the barn where... There's uh, some thugs standing up to him. He gets his, he cuts uh, a guy's hand off with the machete. Yeah, Jason just goes all out in this one. This, I feel, is the one where Jason truly comes into his own and gets his signature look that everybody knows. And since then, hockey masks have been used for Halloween props and merchandise ever since. And, um, yeah... It was Friday the 13th franchise. Jason Voorhees that made hockey masks. Horror. You know, horror for us all. Um, so, yeah, I liked... Um, yeah, I liked Jason's signature look he dawned in this one. Uh, I also liked... There's another bit where Jason uh, walks onto a pier on the lake. And there's a girl in the lake trying to retrieve a wallet. And then she's, like, looking at this guy... And they're looking at Jason, and Jason just shoots her with like a, heart, a little harpoon thing and gets her in the eye. That was in 3D when he shoots the arrow. Uh, there was also some comic relief in this one too from a guy who was a trickster in it. I can't remember the guy's name, but he looked like Fat Bob Ross. Um, a young Fat Bob Ross. Probably Bob Ross mixed with Jonah Hill when he was in Superbad. He was the comedy relief in this. He played pranks. He had the hockey mask as well, and it's the hockey mask that Jason took and started to wear. Uh, even though he played tricks on him, pretending to be dead and killed, there was, uh, you know, when he was really being killed and stabbed, they weren't buying it, but... Yeah. We even had the final girl in this, played by D D D Dina, Dana Kimmel. Um, what's her final girl character's name? Um... Yeah, Chris. Yeah, Chris Higgins. Um, yeah, she fought Jason a bit and even slammed an axe into Jason's head. And that's how he got the signature slit in the mask as well. Um, even then, Jason's still like this, ah, still going after her. And uh, I think the handle was meant to pop out of the screen when it was 3D. Anyways... Um, yeah, that was all crazy, and then eventually Jason had a bit of a delayed reaction and then fell. Of course, just like in the original, I think this was like meant to signify some sort of a trilogy or, or sort of you know, reminisce of the original where she gets into a canoe the next morning, she wakes up, and it's all safe. Well, this time cops don't arrive, Jason's alive and he doesn't have his mask on. There's a bit where Jason lifts up his mask and reveals his face. And um, Chris knows him from uh, her dreams. Yeah, and then there's the bit where Jason's coming for her. But then this time, instead of Jason jumping out of the lake, it's his mother, Pamela, Mrs. Voorhees. Who now she's all rotted up and decayed and she has her head back on. And then she wakes up and that's all a dream. Um, but of course the film does end where Jason's like laid there lifeless with the axe in his head but of course this wasn't the end even when the next film said it was the end it was not the end we still had you know J Friday the 13th parts 3 and 4 are basically one long film like Halloween the, the original Halloween 1 and 2 they're one big film and they carry on straight from each other so technically the fourth one's sort of Saturday the 14th Anyway, yeah, um, this had good kills in there, good um, effects, a great soundtrack to it, a great score from that. Um, yeah, this was, you know, I think the same year it competed with 
uh, Jaws 3D and Amityville 3D. Does it, it says on the wiki page it did. Uh, so yeah, I guess 1982 will like the year of 3D movies, I guess. Um, so yeah, um, is this film good? My dislikes. Um, I guess there were a few characters in there that were irritating. The first act was a little bit slow, but other than that, I like this one. It's definitely not one of the worst sequels. It's definitely, it is one of the good sequels. One of the better ones, anyway. Anyway, this one is known for giving Jason his immortal look. Um, so yeah, is it a good film? Yeah, it's watchable. It's a popcorn beer film. Popcorn or beer pizza film. Just something to watch with your friends and chill out. Do not take seriously. So with all that being said, I'm going to give Friday the 13th part three. Um... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to give this one three machetes out of five. Yeah, three machetes out of five. You know, I mean, yeah, the, I mean, like I say, the films, the Friday series is good. And, you know, I will give high scores for future episodes because I do think some more sequels, I think this is, this, I think this franchise was when it was coming into its own. And that's why they ended up not making the fourth film, the last one, because... There was so much more to come, wasn't there? Anyway, yeah, uh, that's it for today, for day five of 31, the free slashers. So tomorrow I'll be reviewing Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. So, yeah, if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to share with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if, and you're, and if you're new here. And to hit that notification bell so you can stay notified. Um, and... You know, I'm uploading every day throughout October for, for full 31 days because it's the time of the year. It's the season of Halloween. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, that's it for this uh, one, the free sla fr 31, the free slashes. So, until next time, don't have nightmares. Well, until tomorrow, don't have nightmares. <laughs>